All right, let's talk some PWM calculations. It seems like every evening there's one where like we focus on the math. I'm sure you dread it the most. Uh, but we're going to talk about the math for frequency calculations. So let's start off by looking at the example that we did last time. So the example that we did last time, I mean, you can flip to it. Uh, we set it up with a uh, 141, uh, a 16 prescaler. Um, Oh, by the way, I forgot to add the delays. I'm surprised it didn't yell at me last time. I'll just add it real quick here. Delays.h. All right, I get that in there. Um, but what we did uh, was we set this up, and you just copied it. Let's see if we can figure out what frequency it is uh, and kind of walk you through it. So the way this works is that first you've got to know what is the clock. Uh, so the clock we set up to our standard uh, 110, which is 4 megahertz, right? So you know this, 4 megahertz. The instruction cycle is always one fourth of the clock, so 1 megahertz. From there, I sometimes go and convert to period, so it's 1 microseconds uh, in terms of the period of 1 megahertz. If the prescaler was using a 16 to 1, that means it runs 16 times slower uh, than the timer, so it's got 16 microseconds. And then this 141, uh, I'm going to do something sneaky that I'll explain lady later, um, it actually is 142 timer ticks, because what it does is it counts up, um, and as soon as it sees a match, like, you know, 141, uh, then it says, ooh, that's a match, and then it'll roll over. And if you notice that by counting starting at zero, um, you actually get 142 total ticks. Details, details. Uh, so if we take 16 microseconds times 42, that appears to be uh, 0, 0, 2, 2, 7, 2, um, which if you then do a one over of that, so that's how long it is between rising edges, uh, it is 440 hertz. So 440 hertz is the note that was playing. It's actually a very popular note. It's A, which is just above middle C. Uh, so 440 hertz is what's playing. And the way you figure it out is because open PWM1, what it does is it tells you the number of timer ticks between rising edges. That's all it does. So this is the, this variable I sometimes call timer ticks, right? So whenever I pass it in, I say this is the number of timer ticks. Easy enough. There is also a cool little formula, uh, which if you looked at the um, the C18 library PDF, it mentioned this formula right in there. And that formula says that the desired PWM period is equal to timer ticks plus one, so you saw that before, uh, times four times T, this T here means period, so the period of the oscillator. Um, times whatever the prescaler is, and there it just means like 1, 4, or 16. So if we did this math, um, the first thing you have to put in is right here. What's the time of the, um, of the period? And I've got this in, in the slide notes already, uh, but this is 1 over 4 million. Um, and the first thing you do is you multiply this by 4. Uh, these two guys together are just going to be 1 microsecond. Um, and then you multiply that by 16, and you multiply that by 142. And so that's the same thing we did on the last slide. It's just rearranged into a pretty little formula. That's going to give you the period of 002272. Um, if we wanted to actually know the frequency, it's just 1 over that number, right? And that's the frequency. And if you actually go through and do this with the formula, it'll give you the exact same thing we got on the last slide. Um, it'll give you 440 hertz, plus or minus, right? Uh, so that's the way it works. Let's see if you can do one by yourself. Oh, limitations first. So first, the limitations. Uh, so first off, timer ticks. Timer 2 is 8 bits, so this value has to be from 0 to 255. If you ever want to send something bigger, then, then that's not going to work. Um, and you have to figure up something else in the formula to change. So that's the limitation on that one. The oscillator has its limits as well. Um, so, you know, we use an 8 megahertz clock on one end, 
uh, goes all the way down to 32 kilohertz. Uh, the next slide shows the, the different options. You only have so many choices with the internal oscillator, so you have to pick one. Obviously, we use 4 megahertz whenever we can uh, because that works well with our LCD, um, and it's just kind of our default frequency. The other thing is the prescaler here. It only has three options. It's got 1, 4, or 16. So you are actually pretty limited in the frequencies that you can create, uh, but by tweaking these three different parameters, you can get a lot of different things, right? So, I mean, you're limited, but not that limited. So here was the slide showing the limitations for your oscillators you've got to pick. Uh, and then there's the showing that you're limited to those three prescalers. Practice makes perfect. Uh, let's see if you can do one. So there are two ways to work this problem. One is you could kind of think through um, the table that I've got here. The other way you could do it is with the fancy formula. So. Uh, see if you could do them both, right? So see if you could solve it with the, uh, the kind of the table approach uh, or the fancy formula approach. All right, take a minute and see if you can do it. So I'm gonna work it as well. Uh, so this example here, the first thing you've gotta figure out one or zero, one, one, what on earth is that? Um, let's just go back here and let's just say zero, one, one, that looks like 500 kilohertz. All right, fine, that's weird and random and arbitrary. Uh, but it's what the problem asks for, and we can do that. The instruction cycle, always one-fourth of that. Um, multiply it back by four, um, so you're going to get, you know, four slower. I like to figure up the period next. So the period looks like it's about eight microseconds. Multiply that by four, so 32 microseconds is a timer two tick. Um, and then if we set it to 200 here, that's actually 201 ticks, so I'll do the math on that. So that turned out to be about six milliseconds. Uh, and then if I want the frequency, uh, I'll just do a one over that number. So that looks like it's 155.5 hertz, right? Um, so this is gonna be kind of a nice low sound, something lower than the middle A, right? So that's fairly easy. Uh, you could do the exact same thing uh, with the formula. So with the formula, you know, you just start plugging things into the formula here. So you plug in all these numbers for the formula, uh, you solve it out, you get a very familiar looking number. Huh, crazy, go figure. Um, so that is the period. Um, and then if we ask you for the frequency, you've got to take a one over that number. Uh, so one over the period, in this case, is going to be the 155.5 hertz. Great, so you can see that either approach works for doing the math. This is one way to do the problem where you've been given the code and you're saying, hey, figure out the frequency. But to be honest, what you almost always do is the inverse problem of you're given a frequency and you're told, hey, tell me what you think uh, the code should be to actually do this. This problem is a little bit harder because now it's kind of like you've got, you know, this used to be your unknown, now it's a known. Um, but now you've actually got three different unknowns and you're like, hey, I know enough about math. I can't solve that. I've got three unknowns. Um, it turns out that there are limitations on these three. Um, and in fact, there's only one solution to this problem. So see if you can figure out what it is. You might just have to tr pick something, try it, see if it works. Uh, go back and forth until you find something that works. Uh, so see if you can give me a 3 hertz PWM signal. Take a minute and see if you can solve it. All right, I'll go ahead and solve it with you as well. So the first thing I want to do in kind of putting this formula in is I want to convert my frequency to period. Uh, after that, I do want my unknown to be timer ticks. So I'll just kind of write in, you know, timer ticks. Right, T if you really get sick of writing timer ticks. Um, and then to be honest, the others you just kind of need to, I don't know, just guess at is probably the best place where you would start. Um, so you would probably guess at some oscillator speed Turns out 3 hertz is really, really slow. Um, so in general, I would try 4 megahertz first uh, and see if that would work. It's going to fail miserably. Um, and then I would try something much slower, just to kind of prove the point to see what happens if you tried 4 megahertz. Um, so let's try 4 megahertz right there. Uh, and then the oscillator. Heck, I'll go ahead and go 16 because I know it's going to be slow. And then you figure up from this formula, what is timer ticks? If you go through and you do the math on this, timer ticks turned out to be like 
20,000 or some, some big number, right? Um, and timer ticks has to be in the range from 0 to 255. If it's not, then you can't use it, right? So, you know, like, all right, that didn't work. Um, and, you know, you could try something lower. You could try, like, 1 megahertz. Um, but, I mean, that'll bring it down to, like, 5,000, so that won't work either. Um, so I would just shoot all the way to the bottom, right? Like, is this thing even possible? Can I even go that slow? So I would try the 31 uh, kilohertz. Um, technically, you don't really need to know this. The 31 kilohertz is more accurately 31, uh, 250. It's because it's 8 megahertz divided by 256. That's why the number is there. Um, what the heck, I'll use the exact value. Not that it really matters. Um, so if I go through and I try to solve it with this, let's see what we get. So solving with this guy, I got a timer ticks of 162. Um, and it turns out that that's the only one that, that was possible. Like, if I had picked anything faster, it wouldn't be possible. If I had picked any prescaler other than 16, it wouldn't be possible. And that's just because 3 megahertz is really pushing the limit of the slowest PWM signal that we can easily generate. Um, if you want to go slower than that, use some other system, right? Um, so 3 in a second is really kind of hard to do. Math came out to be 162. People find this math annoying um, because the guess and check, it's really a terrible system. There are not that many options though. There's really only eight different frequencies that you might get, three different prescalers. So you can easily make an Excel sheet to try to help you solve these things. Um, I've done this um, and I recommend that you do it as well, especially for, for the exam. It'll really save you a lot of time. But you can make an Excel spreadsheet that kind of lists, you know, all the different combinations. So here's the combinations for the different clock speeds. Um, and then each one kind of is with the different prescaler. And the way I've got mine set up is I've got an Excel sheet here, which is just A2. Um, and then it does the, the math, right? Um, and it has the answer for timer ticks um, for all these different combinations. So I went ahead and highlighted my favorite combination, which is four megahertz. Um, and I just kind of picked 16 as a prescaler because that works for a lot of notes. Um, and you can see that was how I actually figured up the 440 hertz. I didn't actually do any math. I just put it into my little Excel sheet and I said, hey, I have a desired frequency of 440. What are my options? Um, so note that I could have actually generated 440 a number of different ways. I could have generated all these are legal, right? So I could have used a one megahertz clock, for example, with a 16 prescaler, and then just when I called open, I did it with 35. Um, I could have also done it, you know, with a, a one megahertz clock and a four prescaler, and I could have used 141 again. Um, so there are a lot of options that all work. Some options are better than others. The first thing you have to consider is, am I required to use a certain frequency? If you are, then you're, you're very limited. Uh, but if you're not, typically you want faster frequencies. You can get more operations in per second, so faster is better um, in terms of this. The other thing you have to consider is you actually want a bigger number here, the biggest number that you can possibly get away with, and that's because it improves your resolution, right? So if you open it with 141, then that means your best resolution is like, you know, two parts and 141 can get you a very accurate duty cycle. If you open it with like three, then the best, then you're going to really only be able to get, you know, four duty cycles. You're going to be able to get, you know, kind of each quarter uh, or nothing. Um, I might have done the math wrong. You might have only been able to get 33, 66, or 100%, right? Um, yeah, that one's the right one. Um, so if you open it with some low number, your resolution for duty cycles is going to stink. Um, so you always want the biggest number there you can get. So even though that there are a lot that are valid, you know, these are all legal, those are all legal, these are all legal. Um, the best one is always the biggest one. And then the other consideration that I make is I kind of like for my clock to be faster. So, you know, these are all great in terms of the PWM, uh, but this one is my favorite because it gives me the fastest clock. So they all work, but there is kind of a best one that you should use. Uh, for the exams, though, I'll warn you, sometimes we say you have to use a certain frequency, and then you just have to figure out what you can do from there. All right, this is the way you do the calculations. Uh, the duty cycle is trivially easy, so we just focused on the frequency. Whew, the math one is done. Uh, next time, we'll talk about some applications. All right, see you then. Bye.